imagine after years of hard work, over 30 to 40 pitches to social media companies, you finally get that one piece of content that lands and helps you create a multi-million dollar company. In this episode, I'm joined by Chief Content Officer and President at Better Collective, Brandon Harris, who is the founder of Playmaker HQ, a social media content company that has created amazing content, Road to Fight, with Max Holloway, Jake Paul, Nate Robinson, and now has a podcast network that is building content with people like Shaquille Neal, Marshawn Lynch, Angel Reese, and many more. This is amazing content, and it was really inspiration for me as a content creator to keep hustling and keep moving, and I know everyone's gonna love this one. If you're appreciating and enjoying this content, Give me a subscribe, like, follow, drop me a comment. Always loving people's support and feedback. I'm so grateful for everyone who does that. And now, Brandon Harris, let's get it. to Fight Capital, where we enter the ring of combat sports business. I'm your host, Ryan Rappaport. Today, I'm lucky to be joined by Brandon Harris. He's the founder of Playmaker HQ, a leading sports media company that was acquired by Better Collective for $54 million in 2023. With a background in basketball marketing, Brandon has built a platform that connects sports fans with compelling athlete-driven content across multiple platforms. Now, as the president and chief content officer at Playmaker, he continues to push the boundaries of sports media, focusing on innovative shows and amazing strategic partnerships. Thanks for joining me this morning, Brandon. How are you and where are you joining from? Thanks for having me, man. That was an awesome intro, uh, first of all. But yeah, joining you from South Florida, Boca Raton area. Yeah, man. Well, uh, such an honor to talk with you. I've been following your journey for years now and was so cool to see when Playmaker was acquired by Better Collective. But I'd love for you just to walk us a little bit through the journey of Playmaker HQ and how your experiences in sports and marketing influence its evolution. Yeah. Um, I think the journey was, was, let's call it a lot of pivoting, not a lot of like, not a master plan, not uh, a whole lot of... Uh, design greatness and just kind of continuing to pivot and grow and evolve. And I think um, I want to focus on a couple of the things that are most relevant to combat sports because those were some of the the biggest breakthroughs for us. Uh, And one that sticks out for me was when we we did the show Road to the Fight for Nate Robinson's fight versus Jake Paul. Uh, In the experience working with Nate and covering this fight, it ended up being our first snap show of 34, which ended up being our greatest line of revenue. We ended up acquiring the talent agency who managed Nate Robinson. Um, Just kind of that moment in that fight and getting into combat sports, it was our first piece of combat sports content, basically changed the trajectory of the company. And one could argue got us acquired for tens of millions of dollars eventually. Well, tell me a little bit more about the role that that played in shaping your approach to sports media. I mean, having that happen and doing everything with Snap must have been a pretty amazing experience. Yeah, I think uh, it was our first taste. We had been rejected from, let's call it 20, 30 different pitches to snap. And then finally, Nate Robinson wrote of the fight was what got us on the platform in the first place, was the first taste. Um, And that final episode, the night of the fight, went so viral, um, it just changed the trajectory. And we, we basically put everything down and said, hey, we are all in on snap shows, content, covering come ups and comebacks. It kind of refined our positioning, not only like internally, but like even what our brand was about uh, in terms of just covering the buildups and behind the scenes and like authentic, unfiltered content. And it was it was a total game changer. Well, I mean, that, that in, in itself is such an amazing point. The fact that you had so many pitches that weren't able to turn anything into and this is the one and what it led to i was a huge fan of that as well also the things the stuff you did with max holloway and his road to the fight series and what led up to maybe one of the most viral moments of all time in mma any unique insights that you got from that having worked with max and into the combat sports world Yeah, I think the main thing is there's a lot of luck in this content and I think it's you got to keep taking your at bats and you know, like the fact that Max turned in one of the greatest performances maybe of all time, but at least of the year totally made that series 
something that was good to like something that was remarkable, game changing, viral. And so I think just being prepared, being like patient, doing things the right way and and continuing to grow, like even if you don't see that result right away, I think just being in the right places and doing things the right way, you, you will eventually get those opportunities and then hopefully that you know, helps knock the door down for you and you can you can go and do 10 Road to the Fights and, you know, really kind of grow from there. But that's been our experience is we get these viral breakthrough pieces of content and it kind of sets the stage for the next evolution of the brand for us. Mm. Well, how does Playmaker leverage that behind the scenes content, particularly the stuff with Max and giving that view to create these compelling narratives that are resonating so well with fans? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, like fans are hungry for unfiltered, authentic, real. They want to be closer to their favorite athletes. They want to spend more time with their favorite athletes. I think the consumption has changed a lot from talking heads talking about athletes to now, I'd rather just see it from the source and I'd rather spend my time with the source. And I think that's been proven time and time again with our content. And I think, you know, brands love being close to that. They love be getting things that couldn't otherwise be done or seen. Uh, and I think um, it's kind of a perfect mutual alignment where the media company knows how to produce this, place this right and package it right, market it right. The sponsors really want to invest in it so it is lucrative enough for the media companies to continue to invest in this and for the athletes to care enough to do it. And I think um, that is is the perfect kind of synergy there where you just want to keep doing more and more and more of this because everyone wins. Fans win, athletes win, media companies win, brands win. It's kind of, uh, for, for us, we view it as, as the optimal path. I mean, for me, I just hear relationships, relationships, relationships. I mean, it's gotta be such an important part. Talk to me a little bit about some of the strategies that you and your team are leveraging to build and maintain these relationships with top athletes and how are those relationships impacting your content and your brand? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a pretty large talent team, and before that, we owned a talent agency. And so for me, I've always viewed that the access, the relationships, the connections and uh, as, as like paramount for closing the sponsors, for getting brands in the door, for getting the best content. Because, you know, it's, it's really, if you can't film with people that people care about, like, frankly, like, it's an uphill battle. And so... And then beyond that, like protecting those relationships is so key because you can easily do someone wrong or, or really trigger someone and word spreads pretty fast. And so there's a, an element of being able to manage the relationships once you have that. I think getting in the door is somewhat easier if you have money, like you negotiate a deal, anyone can do that uh, with, with resources. But I think cultivating, maintaining, you know, building on partnerships and relationships is is the challenging part and thankfully we have like a really awesome team of let's call it five that that handle talent relationships that handle talent guest booking for shows that handle these things who live and breathe and are deeply passionate about working with athletes like really want them to be seen right like there's i think that's a big part here is athletes know we're here to kind of help amplify and package and that's it we don't want to clickbait or or just like get a sound bite out and or you know play gotcha like that's the last thing we want we want them to look good we want their fans to love it and that helps us grow the partnerships well it's the growth has been astronomical i mean so many amazing shows you announced uh, announced the stuff with angel reese recently uh, everything you're doing with Shaq as well i'm just curious like talk to me a little bit about how you had to adapt your business model to capitalize on this growing popularity of the content on social media hey everyone quick favor to ask did you know that nearly 80 percent of the people tuning in right now aren't subscribed yet that subscribe button down below is what powers me every week to keep putting out these podcasts Big shout out and thank you to everyone that's been supporting me for this. I couldn't do it without you. If you're enjoying the content, please subscribe below. It means the world to me. And for everyone supporting me, thank you so much. Now back to the show. Yeah, I mean, the team structures have totally changed for us. Like it was uh, initially, it was pretty much social and a couple revenue people. And like we were all making graphics and, you know, grinding out and had a very small team. And then we kind of, then when we were a snap focused company, it was 
a ton of editing. It was just basically like, let's call it 30 editors and, you know, five social people and a couple revenue people. Um, and then now it's, uh, there's a content team, an ops team for the content team. There's a talent team. There's uh, producers who are, who are really great technically and with prep and run a show. And there's a formal sales team. There's a formal marketing team that preps the assets for the sales team. There's a, a post sales group that makes sure that brands are happy and taken care of. Um, so there's kind of a whole machine that's in place with a bunch of different teams. And I think, uh, so it's been dramatically, I, I guess, corporatized and, you know, it used to be very scrappy and small. Well, talk to me about some of the challenges that you had in scaling Playmaker to becoming this leading sports media company, because you guys are definitely taking the charge now. Challenges, man. Uh, every day is a challenge. And I think it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, you just got to make a choice every day that, hey, I still love to do this and I still love creating this content. I still love sports and working with athletes. And I think the challenges are, I don't think they're, they're very hidden. I think, you know, people say, don't meet your, uh, your idols and things. And I think there's in many cases, a ton of validity to that. A lot of egos running wild in the space. There's a lot of, you know, expectations that are very high naturally, understandably, because they're, they're stars making millions and millions and millions of dollars and their management their entire role is to make sure they're happy. So sometimes they can be overbearing, you know, overreactive. So I think just keeping everyone happy as everyone becomes a larger group, it can always be a challenge and balancing the economics of like, you still need to run a profitable business, but you want to make sure that the quality is still there. You want to make sure, you know, you can really ruin a partnership or a relationship by being understaffed or being too lean. And so, um, just kind of a constant, the, the company structure changes every time we launch a new show, every time we identify a new issue, every time we recognize that, Hey, Brandon's not the greatest at this. Like we need someone else to come in and really own this and do a better job. And I think part of it is just also like being humble enough to say, you know, you're not the greatest at everything. Yeah. I feel like people might not understand all of the dealing with personalities and what that partakes as, as someone who's worked with some music artists, NBA players, and, and now in the combat sports scene where I find just frankly the, the athletes are very, a little more uh, grounded sometimes has been amazing <laughs> for me. So, I mean, you know, this acquisition by Better Collective was obviously a game changer. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that influenced your focus on your content strategy moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think before Better Collective, I was a CEO and I never got the opportunity to be too content focused or too creative or, you know, really dive into content. Like I had to do a little bit of everything all the time and solve problems and make sure that the money was in and it was a very different role. And I think I've really treasured, enjoyed and able to grow as a human being in this new role where now I'm president and chief content officer. There are other folks who are handling most of the legal work, there are other folks who are handling most of the revenue follow-ups, invoice follow-ups, things that uh, in a scrappy startup a CEO has to do. And I think uh, it's freed me up to really, really, really dive into content, really, really, really like build those skills. And I think it's been very fulfilling from that perspective and uh, challenging. And for me, if like it's very hard as a startup founder, and I'm sure you, you very much can relate to this, like just... Uh, stagnating to me is like death. Like I cannot stand it. And so for me, it's been kind of a new life to, um, to really learn about what's best headlines are on YouTube, how to like split test thumbnails, what works, like just like get, being able to build and test in one niche has been really awesome for me. Yeah. I'm sure going from editing and making decks and drawing up graphics to actually being able to focus on those intricacies that are help taking to the next level level must be a little fulfilling there. And I can totally, uh, relate with that. Just before we get going, man, what advice would you give to other individuals, companies or media companies looking to break into or grow within sports media? Yeah, I think, I think the landscape continues to shift and I think you should be very tapped into the landscape and, and really networked and understand what opportunities are still there because they change every year and you don't want to go all into a strategy and be blinded by historical data and things. 
the platforms are copycats and constantly evolving and growing, changing. And so um, to me, a landscape that used to prioritize like volume of content now prioritizes like standing out and being exceptional and producing less content. And so I think, think about going bigger, being more niched, being like dominating one thing and, and really making it special and great and capitalizing on that versus like shiny object syndrome and grabbing a bunch of stuff. I think you have your passions, your skill set. So like what, where does the passion and the skill set and the opportunity all align and, um, and really, really, really perfect one thing. Anyone can do that with enough determination, with enough persistence, and then go from there and leverage that to then build the next evolution, try to scale from there. But that's my, my main thing is I think uh, early on I wanted to be everything and do everything and compete with everything and look at what everyone else was doing. And I think eventually I found, hey, I got to get this one win and make it perfect and then go and try to figure out how I can do it 50 more. Yeah, man, that's that's beautiful. There's some, some gems there, and I'm really looking forward to watching as the content continues to grow. I know I'll be watching Marshawn Lynch's new show. I know I'll be watching and following everything Angel Reese is going. I definitely can't wait to see the next Road to the Fight series that you guys roll out. So, uh, Brandon, before we get going, is there any way that people can find out or connect and continue to follow Playmaker, and what would be the best way to do that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brandon Harris on LinkedIn and Instagram, at Playmaker on all platforms, Playmaker on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, would would love to connect. Feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm pretty accessible. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you for having me on. No, man, it's a pleasure. Just watching the growth has been amazing and really looking forward to seeing that next generation and you guys continuing to elevate. Thank you.